dead simple. The plan is to try and build the greatest Spitfire flying today. This is the inside story of a mammoth project to resurrect one of the nation's favorite planes. I could say it's me and a few blokes in a shed, but no, 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 no. It's a few blokes in an aircraft hangar, and I'm gonna give them a bit of a hand. Starting with a rusting wreck dug out of a French beach, the aim is to make the rarest Spitfire of all, a Mark I, using nothing but authentic World War II designs, materials, and techniques. This is going to be exactly as the Mark I was built 75 years ago, exactly. The original plane was once flown by an RAF hero whose forgotten tale of daring do involves Dunkirk, crash landings, colditz, and even the Queen. Wow. But only if an airworthy plane can be built will the original pilot's Ooh. daughters finally witness the tribute their father deserves. We're not talking models or anything, we're not playing at it. This is the real deal. The Spitfire is arguably the most successful fighter design ever. Come on, come on then, keep up, keep up. Produced in greater numbers than any other British combat plane, it was introduced in 1938 and wasn't taken out of frontline service until 1954. <laughs> it's not very big, is it? Eh? Its V-12 engine made it faster than anything else in the sky. It could do 350 miles per hour. Its elliptically shaped wings cut through the air to make it the best handling and easiest to fly plane the RAF had. It's not hard to look at, is it? Hey, beautiful. This was the aircraft that gave the country its finest hour, victory in the Battle of Britain, when Germany was just two days away from invading. I mean, it is a bold statement, isn't it? But I mean, if it weren't for them, we won't be here now. And I think you're just right, isn't it? Well, we might be eating bratwurst. And yet it was only five months earlier that the Spitfire, and the very plain guy will attempt to remake, had made its debut in serious aerial combat. It was the Dunkirk evacuation, Operation Dynamo. By May 1940, Germany had successfully invaded most of Europe. It relentlessly attacked the remaining 300,000 Allied troops who had been cut off in northern France. We shall fight on the beaches, we shall fight in the fields and in the streets. 19 Squadron, based at Duxford in Cambridgeshire, had been first to take delivery of the Spitfire. It was tasked with defending the troop evacuation. We shall fight with growing confidence and growing strength in the air. The commanding officer was a very special pilot. Geoffrey Stevenson, yeah, legend. He was trying to provide air cover during, during the mass evacuation. As fighter pilots came, he was as good as they got. Yeah, he was the man. Geoffrey Stevenson had flown in an early version of the Red Arrows aerobatic display team before the war with the famous ace Douglas Bader. Well, we know the name Douglas Bader, the tin legs. Yeah, ten legs. 30-year-old Stevenson's squadron was amongst the first to reach the deadly skies above Dunkirk. I'm sure if you was amongst that, like you would have just said it was like the end of the world, Armageddon, wouldn't you? Black smoke everywhere. It was like raining planes. And the planes had been shot down. The anti-aircraft fire. Bombs. Witnesses of the time say he was just canny, he was canny. 19 Squadron quickly proved the new Spitfire's work, shooting down four Messerschmitts. But soon after, they were dramatically outnumbered. In the ensuing dogfight, two Spitfires were hit. One of them was Squadron Leader Stevenson's. Let's took a bullet to the radiator. He had to force land the Spitfire on the beach we're at now. Yeah, they've been a bit messy. Drenched in boiling engine coolant and with a cockpit full of steam, 
Stevenson crash-landed into the beach. Somehow he survived. Refusing to give himself over to the Germans, he went on the run. We shall never surrender. Stevenson's plane, designation N3200, became a toy for the Germans. Yeah, it was a bit of a trophy to the Germans. I'd have a few choice words for them boys. Who had the last laugh, eh? Within a fortnight, this prized British icon, flown by a national hero, had disappeared into the sand. And it stayed there, left to rot. But in 1986, the remains were unearthed, and eventually they came into the possession of two anonymous collectors obsessed by originality. They were determined to produce a plane that was precisely as Jeffrey Stevenson would have flown it during the war, so it could be displayed in air shows around the country. They sent the wreckage home to the old Duxford base Stevenson first flew it from. Today it houses a museum and the best historic aviation engineers in the world. We take pride in what we do and they're put together properly with, with care and attention. Even the bits you can't see that are buried deep within the wing are done correctly. It's a bit like restoring fine artwork, I suppose. You know, It's totally, completely handmade. The ultimate. You can get to work for a Formula One team, but I'm not bothered. Are you bothered? I'm not really bothered. Go on, I'm giving you another mini cup. NASA. NASA. Working with Americans, I won't get on with Americans. Who else? Give me another job. What, what else would it be like? Sir. Oh, sir, large hadron collider. Yeah, but to, um, to be honest, I don't think I'm clever enough for that. Getting to work on a Spitfire with a Rolls Royce in it. That's the ultimate. You have made it. That's it. As well as following in the footsteps of the original workforce who built the Spitfire, yep. using their exact same techniques. Look at that. Like a glove. Like a glove. Guy will learn about the power of the Spitfire's guns. I'm not much of a runner, to be honest. The speed of the ground crew. Right, where do you want me? Learn from the people that built and flew the Spitfire originally. It's amazing what you can do when the chips are down. It's amazing. I don't know what we've done without them. Do you? Experience the flight of his life which takes a surprising twist. This is going to be a bit different, Guy. And uncover the extraordinary tale of the original pilot, Jeffrey Stevenson. I feel very honoured to work on one. I say, oh, it's just... It's just a bit, it's a bit much, it's a bit of a... I'm a bit of a dither. <laughs>